Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. This is the 14th video on my series about fluids, electrolytes, and acid-based disturbance. Over the next few videos, we're gonna talk about normal kidney physiology. Today, let's talk about the proximal convoluted tubule. Best explanation ever, I promise. So let's get started. But first, let me answer the question of last video. Which of the following scenarios do you expect to find in a patient whose stupid doctor infused him with 3% saline? As you know, 3% saline is what? Is hypertonic. Its osmolality is greater than that of the plasma. So once you infuse this, what's going to happen to the plasma osmolality? It has to increase. So A is wrong and D is wrong. It's either B or C. Now the plasma ADH level, the most important stimulus for the release of ADH is hypertonicity. And now we have hypertonicity, so of course ADH is gonna go up and the answer here is B. In his book titled The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey said, successful people put first things first and so does the kidney so let's start with renal blood flow as you know the kidney receives 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output the cardiac output is five liters per minute on average so 25 is a liter and quarter per minute as you know 55 percent of the blood is plasma the other 45 percent is red blood cells that's why the hematocrit value normally is around 45 percent so the plasma volume is 55 percent times the blood volume equals around 600 mls per minute we call this the renal plasma flow then of the renal plasma flow only 20 percent is filtered called the gfr so the filtration fraction which is gfr over renal plasma flow is 125 over 600 or around 20 percent normal gfr is uh, between 100 to 125 and it differs by age gfr per day is 125 times 60 times 24 equals 180,000 ml per day and 100 liter 180 liters per day and since your plasma volume is three liter the kidney filters your freaking plasma 60 times per day, 24 seven. Hemodialysis at best draws your blood at a rate of 200 to 400 ml per minute. And it's not 24 seven. Like you go to hemodialysis like three times a week or something like that. Your kidney is freaking amazing. Blood comes through the afferent arterial to the glomerulus, then the efferent arterial will continue to the peritubular capillaries. 600 ml per minute, this is the renal plasma flow, 125 in the tubule, this is the GFR, 475 it will continue to the peritubular capillaries. Now, here is the, the filtrate or the tubular fluid going to the urine, reabsorption is going to the capillary, secretion is going from the capillary to the tubular filtrate. Cool. So reabsorption and secretion depending, depend on startling forces as I've discussed in the previous video. Mechanisms of transport. So here is the tubular lumen, here is your nephron or the tubule, and here is the peritubular capillaries for fluid to be reabsorbed. It has two different pathways, either the transcellular, trans means through the cell, or paracellular between cells or next to the cell. Transcellular could be active or passive. But paracellular is always passive, which means it doesn't require ATP. So active or passive, active could be carrier transport, such as primary active transport and secondary active transport or pinocytosis for some proteins. So instead of just memorizing some facts, if you understand the grand theme, you can understand kidney physiology easily. Your kidney follows grandma's way of handling money. What did grandma tell you? Live on less than you make, spend less, save more this is called frugality so you should prioritize your spending and put first things first so the kidney lesson to grandma i would spend as little atp as possible and if i'm gonna spend atp anyway let me spend it on sodium but why sodium sodium is very plentiful sodium is osmotically active and it's effective it's an effective osmol 
Also, sodium attracts chloride and water and glucose and amino acids, so many birds with one stone. Go get them, kidney. And the one stone here is ATP, only once. So here's your proximal convoluted tubule, tubule, tubular cell, peritubular capillary. Okay, we're gonna spend energy on sodium only. We're gonna save money. Cool. Sodium is plentiful in the tubular fluid. So sodium can go from here to the tubular cell by passive diffusion down the concentration gradient. But for in order for sodium to go from the tubular cell to the peritubular capillary against the concentration gradient, we need to spend energy on sodium. This is called primary active transport. But look at that. We spend money only on sodium and look what's gonna happen. Glucose is gonna flow with sodium by the sodium glucose transporter too. This is a secondary active transport. What else? Amino acids are gonna, are gonna follow sodium. What else? Calcium is gonna follow sodium. What else? Bicarbonate is gonna follow sodium. Oh, we spent energy only once and all of this amazing stuff happens. So, at the luminal border, which is here, sodium moves along gradient by simple diffusion. No energy needed. At the basal lateral border, sodium moves against gradient. Now we need energy. This is primary active transport. The kidney spends ATP only once at one border only, the basal lateral border. What follows sodium? Chloride follows sodium. Why? Electroneutrality by charges. Sodium is positive, chloride is negative, they follow each other. Water. Water follows sodium by osmosis. It's called obligated water. Glucose is gonna follow sodium through the sodium glucose co-transporter, which is a secondary active transport, amino acids, calcium, and bicarbonate, this is secondary active transport. What goes against sodium is hydrogen. So, your proximal convoluted tubule is very active. It absorbs 65% of your sodium. It contains lots of mitochondria, of course, and it's going to be affected by tissue hypoxia because it's very active. Let's talk about glucose for a while. Glucose moves here at the apical border or the brush border or the luminal border by the sodium glucose transporter, which is a secondary active transport. But from the tubular cell to the peritubular capillaries, it needs the glute glucose transporter, which is a facilitated diffusion, which is passive, not active, if you remember. I made several videos on the different types of glutes, so make sure to watch them. Chloride. Chloride moves through the paracellular route, and this is a passive diffusion. It's not active. So, in brief, your kidney follows grandma's way of handling money. Spend money only once at one border in the sodium potassium ATPase. Other than that, they are just gonna follow sodium. That's why sodium is freaking amazing. Now, sodium reabsorption. First, sodium leaves the tubular lumen, and sodium is electrically positive. It's gonna attract the electrically negative chloride by charges, which will aid in reabsorption of chloride down gradient. This is passive. Also, sodium reabsorption attracts water by osmosis, leading to water reabsorption. When water flows from the tubular cell to the peritubular capillary, it leaves the concentration of chloride higher here. So now chloride becomes more concentrated. It can flow down the concentration gradient, which will help in reabsorption of chloride. Amazing. How does the proximal tubule handles acid? As you know, your metabolism secretes acids, acids, acids. So the kidney puts first things first. Let's get rid of this acid as early as possible. What do you mean by early? At the first segment, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. And at the first border, which is the luminal border. Do you think we're gonna wait until the distal convoluted tubule to secrete hydrogen? No. Do you think we're gonna wait until this basal lateral border? No. Get rid of acid as early as possible because your metabolism is secreting acid like crazy and it's gonna cause acidosis until you die. So let's get rid of acid early. We get rid of acid thanks to sodium, and this is a secondary active transport. We consumed energy only once, so this is primary active, but this is secondary active. We call this sodium 
hydrogen exchanger. So this is the story of acid in brief. Let's talk about this amazing sodium potassium pump. We spend energy at the sodium potassium pump at the basal lateral border. Now sodium is flowing from the tubular cell to the peritubular capillary. The concentration of sodium in the tubular cell is going to decrease, which favors the movement of sodium from here to here down gradient, which is wonderful. We have talked about secretion of hydrogen. Let's talk about reclamation or reabsorption of bicarbonate. We have CO2 all over the place and water all over the place. Let's combine them together to form the carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is going to give us bicarbonate and protons. This is called the golden equation, or at least I call it this way. Now, reabsorb bicarb to the peritubular capillary and secrete hydrogen, as discussed before, to the tubule. Because your metabolism is secreting acid, and the best way to deal with acidosis is to secrete acids and reabsorb bases at the same time. This is astonishing. All of this was only possible because we spent energy only once at one border. Now you know all you need to know about the proximal convoluted tubule. It's very easy. Please watch this video more than once. In the next video, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen when your proximal convoluted tubule is screwed. Quiz time. A 61-year-old male comes in complaining of ankle swelling, shortness of breath. On physical exam, he has S3 gallop rhythm, 4 plus bilateral petting ankle edema, RALS, jugular venous distension, respiratory rate of 22, and orthopnea. What do his osmolality and ECF look like? And here is the normal, and here are your five choices. Let me know the answer in the comments. You'll find the answer in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can support this channel on Patreon. Join me on Patreon and be part of Medicosis. I'll give you many notes and many cases and many audio notes. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.